Hide your kids. Lock the doors. You're listening to HR's most dangerous podcast. Chad Sowash and Joel Cheeseman are here to punch the recruiting industry right where it hurts. Complete with breaking news, brash opinion, and loads of snark. Buckle up, boys and girls. It's time for the Chad and Cheese Podcast. Happy Cinco de Mayo. 47% of all drinks ordered in the U.S. today are margaritas. Hola, niños. You're listening to the Chad and Cheese Podcast. This is your co-host, Joel Cerveza Cheeseman. And this is Chad. I'll have a Corona, so wash. And on this week's episode, Hack a Job Comes to America, Not So Happy Meals at McDonald's, <laughs> and the end is nigh, humans. Let's do this. Damn, back from Vegas just in time to rest up and get ready. Well, you had a mini marathon. Uh, (laughs) Now we got to rest up, then we have Cinco de Mayo, then we find ourselves back on the left coast again uh, next week. Yep, there's a a pool with my name on it. I'm a little concerned though, Chad. These these hotels are getting really nice that these companies are having these events. (laughs) I'm not sure they're going to let a guy like me in. I'm going to have to hit up a Motel 6. Off of uh, Highway Econo 66 Lodge. or something. Yeah, Econo yeah. Lodge, Holiday Inn, Express. <laughs> I don't I don't know. I'm, I'm getting a little worried. A little high class, these uh, damn companies. Uh, the the, the Cheeseman brand has to be, it has to be solid. The Econo Lodge cheese, Cheeseman brand. That's that's my people. Give me a, give me a, <laughs> give me an all you can eat waffle bar and I am a happy, happy man, everybody. Happy. All you can eat waffle bar and a uh, chocolate volcano. That's right. That's right. I got a shout out, Chad, and I got a beef. Oh God! I Here we beef. go. I got a beef Already? with Gen X. Oh, I got a beef with, with Gen X. A Gen X beef, yeah. Oh, so okay. fuck. You and I came of age when the baby boomers were uh, going from their like hippie Woodstock period to their Wall Street greed is good period. And we all swore like that's not going to happen to us. They're, they're cool to asshole. Period. Is yeah, what our yeah. our pop icons are going to be solid. And uh, I point anyone uh, younger to go search a, a interview with Kurt Cobain back in the early '90s, where uh-huh. they uh, they told Kurt that Madonna's tickets, concert <laughs> tickets, were fifty plus dollars, and Kurt, you know, gobsmacked, couldn't believe it. Uh, mm-hmm. I think mean, Nirvana tickets at the time were probably twelve to fifteen dollars. So anyway, my wife is a, is a huge Pearl Jam fan. It's her favorite band. They're touring this year, and they're coming to Indianapolis for the first time in over a decade. They're only doing nine cities. Yeah. So she's super excited. And people will also remember the 90s that Pearl Jam was this band that fought Ticketmaster, fought the man, like was anti-capitalism, pro-green. Like they were sort of the poster childs for this. Well, you got yeah, you got to register to even buy tickets. So you put your name in a little lottery, and then you get an email whether you can buy tickets. Well, my wife was selected. Um, went to go buy tickets. I wanted to get the best tickets possible. Well, to her surprise, the best tickets possible now to a Pearl Jam concert are in the eight hundred to a thousand dollar range. <laughs> oh, God. Eight, let, let me say eight hundred to a thousand dollar range. Now, fighting I'm, the man I'm, to become the man. I'm as pro capitalist as the other guy, but if your brand is based on fighting the man, doing it for the fans, you know, keeping it real, yeah, uh, Dave, Dave Matthews style, fish style, et cetera, you can't drop eight hundred to a thousand dollar tickets at a concert. So I just I had to get that out. L- little little Gen X disappointment there. Little beef with with Pearl Jam. Ten and a lot. Ten and verses are still fantastic albums, but I'm I'm a little less bullish on pearl jam at the moment and did they need money did eddie was eddie broke was eddie hurting i mean come on now never meet your heroes never meet your heroes uh my first shout out goes to rakeem morris the ceo of our work he actually sat with our dumb asses for about an hour and a half actually more than that Mm -hmm. uh to create the new voices five part series we dropped it yesterday uh wednesday a five part bingeable series uh, so go check it out. You can go to chadcheese.com, go to voices. Uh, you can check it out there. Also, I created a Spotify playlist. That's right. Uh, all you have to do is uh, search voices and Rakeem Morris, uh, but five episodes, this dude's journey. I mean, I'm talking about way back when he was like a kid, like a preteen, his yeah. journey 
to all the way through to d- today is just an amazing, an amazing story. And I'm glad we got a chance to to, to do this series. It, it's really good. And I, I feel like we, we've either we've either jumped the shark with this five part <laughs> series or we're going to we're going to start giving Netflix a run for its money. I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure which one. All right. So uh, you mentioned you mentioned my mini marathon after mm-hmm. my uh, liver destruction tour uh, date <laughs> in Vegas. Um, yes. yes. So I'm sitting down. I go to Louisville and uh, Louisville will come up later in the show, by the way. I'm sitting down with my nieces, my family and my nieces are in their 20s. I like to get like what's what's trending, what's happening, what kind of app should I be paying attention to? Yeah, uh, they're on Be Real. They're obviously on TikTok and everything. And and one of my nieces says, the latest trend is fake obituaries. Fake obituaries. So apparently, I've seen these things though. Haven't you? Yeah. Haven't you seen these things? No, I have not. This is ah. new to me. Um, so she sent me. She sent me a TikTok, and people are faking deaths, faking like literal death certificates and statements to employers. Okay, and apparently it's. That. Apparently it's easier than ever with work from home and remote. You can just take these things online. There are on. templates. I'm telling Come you. So, on. so I just, I want all the HR people out there to listen to, to know that, to be on alert that fake obituaries are a thing. So I'm going to play, I'm going to play you the soundbite okay. from, from the TikTok, And just to give you, just to give you a flavor. Here we go. Hope it's still funny in hell, Gen Z. I hope it's still funny in hell. Shout out to fake obituaries. It says something about a society when it's that hard to get a fucking day off, you got to fake your dad's death. I mean, it, it says something about the character of that person, but it also says something about us, our society. Uh, one good thing about our society, I'm going to give a... a, a uh, Big shout out to Mark Coleman and the Unleashed team for an amazing event, number one. But I have a a special shout out that's a little bit more personal. Are you ready for this one? It's not sexy, okay? It's not sexy at all. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So uh, you and some listeners might already know that my stepdaughter, Kennedy, lives and works in Budapest. Mm -hmm. Uh, Less than a year ago, she started working with Mark and the Unleashed team in the midst of preparing for a huge Unleash America event. Kennedy, living in Budapest, had a medical emergency. So Julie jumped on a flight and Mark and the team dropped everything and provided amazing support to Kennedy. Long story short, uh, she had minor surgery and uh, was on a flight to Vegas with Mama Julie less than a week after the surgery. So this was something that could have been major, but because of the quick reactions, the care and the support from Mark, Gina, Orsi, and, and the team at Unleash, a crisis was averted. So shout out to an amazing Unleash team. Thanks so much. Uh, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, you have friends in the industry, you have people that you have acquaintances in the, in the industry. Uh, obviously, you know, we, we are continuing to find uh, the people that are, are, are more than friends, but family. And we, when we're starting to, to, I think, have even deeper connections than we ever have. And, yep. and I am thankful. So thanks, guys. Feel, feels very European to me. I feel like if it had happened in America, it would have been like, good luck. Yeah. See you at the bar. Rugged <laughs> individualism. You'll be fine. <laughs> Good luck. See you later. See you later. <laughs> All right, Chad. Well, we mentioned it on every show. Yes. We got free shit. And Ooh, I took a bunch of T-shirts. Shit. Mm-hmm. bunch of t-shirts to vegas i got rid of all of them these things are hot <laughs> hot hot items they are the canadians can't get enough i think they're reselling them at, at top dollar <laughs> in calgary and yes. winnipeg i think they're they're hot items so anyway if you want to get one in your mailbox you got it you got to go to chadcheese.com backslash free or click the free link uh we're talking uh beer from our friends at aspen tech labs whiskey from text kernel free t-shirts from job get uh and if it's your birthday chad you could win rum with plum that's right we'll send you a nice bottle of rum from our friends at plum but you got to play if you want to win chadcheese.com click the free link to win 
You know what that means. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Mm-hmm. That brings us to birthday shout outs for the week. These people are sp- spinning another trip around the sun. Uh, shout out to uh, Annie Jarvis, Glenn Hill, Garvit Sharma, Jerry Frank, Peter Shapira, Shauna Berthold, Keegan Osipek, Stefan Jean, St- Sarah Starkweather, Sarah Addison, Bennett Sung, who we interviewed, so be on the lookout for that. J.T. O'Donnell, the mouth of Portsmouth. She, she's celebrating another year around the sun. <laughs> Robert Rayner, Alfonso Zamara, Herb Drew, Lou Adler, Matt Kaiser, and our favorite Chicagoan, Joe Shaker. All another year older. Happy birthday, everybody. Happy birthday, uh, Joe. And our list of fans is getting everybody. big. At what yes. point do we like, I, we can't, it's too many people. It's too many people. We're just going to have to, we're just going to have to uh, announce uh, the winners. I think is uh, where we're probably going to have to go with uh, this. I'm going to need a supply of oxygen. Uh, soon that being, that, that being that said, we need to get to events. Also brought to you by Shaker Recruitment Marketing. That's right, kids. Whenever the Chad and Cheese travel, we travel in style uh, with uh, Shaker Swag. Um, events coming up. We talked about Unleash. It was amazing. Now we're getting ready to go to California, baby. Coronado Beach for iSims Inspire, where Chad and Cheese are closing out day one with Lore Porter, who's the director of HR systems at Penn Entertainment, who recently, Joel, yep. acquired Barstool Sports. And Christy Spilka, VP and Global Head of TA for iSIMS. We're going to be doing a roundup of, of what we heard from the stage that day. And who knows? Maybe, you know, maybe we'll be drunk uh, prior to getting on there. Are you, you prepped and ready for, for, for Cali? Again, similar to the high-end hotels that they're putting us in, <laughs> I feel like the guests are getting way too too solid for us. Like, I'm used to the degenerates and the the, the vendor side of the house. We're talking to like the elitists in the employment and hiring (laughs) process. So I'm going to, I might shave a little bit. I'm getting a little ratty. So I might shave a little bit, uh, comb my hair and put on some clone for this audience. I know, I know Christy and the team over at ISIMS, they are avid listeners. So they're, they're, they're going to be there and and listening in. Then we're going to find ourselves, it's going to be in July. So we're going to take a little time off, which is nice. Uh, But July 6th, in Nebworth Park, just north of London, uh, Chad and Cheese are going to be hosting the Disrupt Stage, where it will be all things tech all damn day. And if you have not been to a rec fest, kids, listen up. Listen up, listener. Go to chadcheese.com. Click on the events in the upper right-hand corner. Mm-hmm. Check out our events. Register, but you've got to. If you're even close to the UK. You got to go to Wreckfest. Jesus, yep. this place is a fucking carnival. It is amazing. <laughs> By the way, there could be a cold cheeseman sighting in Nebworth, which <laughs> which I know you've seen European Vacation, uh National Lampoons and the scene Rusty. where the scene where Rusty makes out with the German girl. Uh I'm having a little bit of, of fear that some British girl might have it her way uh with my 16-year-old son. So yeah, a little be, fear. I'm going to yes, have the I'm leash. Sure. I'm going to have the leash on cold cheeseman uh in Nebworth for sure. <laughs> Topics. Oh my God. Layoffs. layoffs, baby. We haven't talked about layoffs in a while, but we got some big ones here in our industry to talk about. Number one, Greenhouse. Greenhouse, who I predicted would go public uh, this year, which does not seem very, very good for me at the moment, <laughs> uh, but, but we'll see. It's, uh, mm-hmm. it's only Q1 at this point. So they, lo- they laid off, ac- according to layoffs.fyi, uh, 12% of the workforce or 100 or some people gloat mm-hmm. another big, big winner in the investment sweepstakes laid off 12% uh, of their workforce and culture amp kind of ah. a surprise there laid off uh-huh. 9% or 90 people according to layoffs.fyi. So yeah. talking layoffs. 
So, so greenhouse, I mean, being able to talk about IPO still feeding into your prediction. I mean, this is, this is generally part of the recipe to go to IPO, right? You're thinning, you're thinning out the ranks. Uh, You're focusing on obviously spend revenue, all that stuff, right? So you could still, that that prediction could still come true. Doubtful, but it could come true. Well, you know what they say (laughs) about my predictions, Chad. Every time. All right, let's talk about London-based Hack a Job, mm-hmm. founded in 2014. They've raised $25 million in a Series B, bringing their grand total to $33 million. The company will use the funds to accelerate expansion into the United States. Hack a Job's product suite includes a two-sided marketplace for direct talent sourcing, online assessments, remote interviews, and the like. The company says it has a community of over half a million techies. Chad, your take on the hack a job news. So I think platforms like hack a job are what all legacy job sites and applicant tracking systems, core talent platforms should be modeling after. Hmm. I'm a huge fan of two sided marketplaces, but I really like the feel of hack a job as the, the, they position the platform as a, an employees come to you or employers rather come to you type of system. And that's a great way to entice top talent to join up. Uh, Then there's the upskilling and testing modules in the platform, which I believe every single fucking marketplace should have. Uh, The companies receive 85% response rates uh, and they reduce their volume of candidates, which means they're getting more quality than they are quantity, i.e. indeed still sucks. Also 25% of active candidates now based in the US, which means they have tremendous room for growth with this cash. Now, HackerRank and GitHub are major competitors, but I believe if HackerJob creates the right partnerships, key to growth here in the US kids, partnerships, they can compete in the market. Uh, we're seeing amazing types of uh, marketplaces like Harry with an I, Uh, on the hospitality side, where they're building an entire ecosystem and also applicant tracking system, onboarding, those types of things. Uh, This is the new age, right? Mm -hmm. This is the new age. So I I love what Hackajob is doing. I think it's a a model and a standard. And and again, we're seeing the same thing in hospitality with Harry. So we have a little show uh, that covers the European market. And we like to comment regularly that companies from Europe that come to the U.S. Uh, typically face a pretty, pretty negative, pretty negative uh, outcome. So Hack a Job has its has its work cut out for it, to say the least. I think there are a few headwinds. I like the business overall, but there's some things outside of their outside of their purview that that are going to impact them. Number one is the tech employment f- universe. Yeah. is freaking out right now. Uh, Elon's laying off everybody, uh, but can do what do what they've done with less people. Meta, Apple, Amazon, like laying off people. Um, I'm hearing from tech folks that you can turn an entry level or or you know modest experienced recruiter into like a super 10x type recruiter. So. Uh, can you do more with less? Can you do more with not senior people or the, or the levels that you have had before? I think we're going to find out. I think Twitter is sort of at the, at the edge of that. And mm-hmm. a lot of companies are going to watch to see what happens there, what happens to all these, you know, we'll talk about some companies here in a little bit that are also laying people off, thinking that AI can do the job of developers. So there's a major headwind in terms of just the techie developer ecosystem that's going to yeah. hit everybody, not just hack a job, but everybody. So that's, that's number one. Number two is, uh, timing again, timing's a little rough, high inflation, uh, war in Europe. Like it's just not the best time to do a lot of stuff. A lot of companies are staying pat. So growing right now, you're getting ahead of the curve and hoping that things will get better. I hope they do certainly, but we'll see what happens there. And the other one, I think the biggest is competition. Looking at America, we got touring and Della hacker rank stack overflow. You mentioned GitHub. I'll throw Dice in there, damn it. I will throw in no. Dice no. and all the others out, out there, <laughs> top, tall, et cetera. Um, it's going to be a hard row to hoe for Hack-A-Job. Um, I, I, I'm bearish on them. You're bullish. 
But yeah. I think uh, both of us uh, look at it as things outside of their purview that are going to impact them more than just the business itself and what they do. We saw, and I'll show my, my t-shirt here, it says, fuck interviews from a uh, hiring branch, them, the Tadios of the world. And I feel like all of these, these marketplaces, the, the hacker ranks, the GitHubs, the hacker jobs, they are all focused on a, a couple of things, upskilling and or a, not just assessments, but tests, right? So most of these platforms at that point can, can get rid of the, the interview entirely. Unless you're really looking for a quote unquote culture fit, uh, you don't need it, especially if you've got tech people who are working remote for the most part, right? So I see this as a, as a great opportunity. And again, most of these marketplaces, um, they've got to move toward upskilling and assessments, either through partnership or through through building it themselves. Now, from a timing standpoint, I agree from the, from the standpoint of, I think this is perfect timing because if it was booming at this point, mm -hmm. they wouldn't have enough time to actually focus in, on areas of the business that, that they, they could or should, right? I think they're going to have more time because they don't have as much uh, demand on them. They've got the money, so now they can retool. And when everything hits, and it will, because it's always the cycle, they'll be ready for it. So uh, again, I think that the hacker jobs, hacker ranks, GitHubs, all of these organizations that are focused on marketplaces that upskill and also test are getting well, well in front of the old style uh, career sites like the Indeeds, the Zip Recruiters and even applicant tracking systems. These guys are going to leapfrog over them if these companies, these old legacy organizations don't get their shit together. Sounds like you're saying if they're gonna make it into America, they gotta go deep. <laughs> oh shit. Oh, here we go. Not again. Yeah, we got what we're calling Thanks. the uh, the doomsday segment in two parts. Call it the white album for Chad and Cheese, a double <laughs> double album. We'll, we'll have an advertising break in between, but we some things it. are happening with AI that scary as shit should ever yeah. should be on everyone's radar so let's go through some of these and we'll, we'll have a comment on each one so number one the week started with jeffrey hinton known as the godfather of ai i bet that picks up chicks at the bar yeah. don't you uh he's <laughs> he's quit google uh he regrets the work he's done in fear ai could lead to the proliferation of fake images videos and text no shit he also warned ai could power killer robots and Carl cause harmful disruption to the labor market. No shit. Chad, your take on the Godfather bowing out. Yeah, I mean Skynet's Skynet's on its way, right? I mean it's it's interesting they they asked uh AI AI experts uh what the likelihood was of AI actually taking over and being deadly and they said about 10%. Okay, 10% is pretty fucking big. <laughs> that is that's that's a little bit much, kids. You know, yeah. what do we need to do to regulate this shit? So, you know, as we hear about just literally this unregulated no guardrail AI that's happening out there. Mm -hmm. I can see, I can see where the guy wants to eject. He probably has plenty of money and chicks again, being the, the godfather of AI. Yep. So yeah, no, I, I see that now being able to progress into what's the next step and, and are we going to lose jobs in this market? The, the, is, is, is the next question, I think. Yes. The next question, by the way, did you see the killer <laughs> drone that hit Moscow this week? Yeah, it was funny because I think on the news today, they were talking about how like somebody, you know, went out and got a couple of drones from Radio Shack or something yeah. like that. It was it was all just like, OK, th this is really nothing much to do about anything. It's kind of like the drones that you might see uh, around your neighborhood. Yeah, I'm calling okay. I'm calling a uh, fake flag on that one. I, I just nah. there's no way that was a legitimate hit on on Putin's life like. That yeah. was literally like a kite with a bomb, a fire. Not from on it. Ukraine, <laughs> for God's sakes, no. <laughs> and they're blaming us for it. Look, say what you want about America. If we want to take a guy out, we're probably going to take the guy out, <laughs> no matter no matter which thing. All right, so so that leads us into more doomsday scenarios. Let's talk about mm. the IBM CEO. 
Yeah. Who said, quote, he expects to pause hiring for roles as roughly 7,800 jobs could be replaced by AI in the coming years. 30% of non-customer facing roles could be replaced by AI and automations within five years. Chad, your take on the IBM CEO comments. So first and foremost, we've all recognized that most of the corporate ranks have become bloated. We're seeing the, we're seeing these layoffs because of the huge bloat that's happened. So cuts shouldn't surprise us, even though the C-suite's job is to plan and manage the business. So CEOs and the C-suites almost across the board have underperformed in these tasks and, and, and doing their damn jobs. Uh, for most of what we're hearing, though, over and over and over is the phrase cutting mundane tasks, mm -hmm. which does not equal jobs. OK, so we, we, we continue to have that discussion about tasks, which does make sense, but it's augmenting the human, not replacing the human. So let's be serious. We're not talking about less humans performing uh, different positions. We're talking about being able to give them a better experience and then also prospectively customers better experience as well. But here's the big question. So during this whole discussion, you've got to ask yourself, why is IBM CEO saying this out loud? This isn't great for optics when it comes to holding on to top talent. So why is he saying this out loud? Are you going to tell us? I have, I have a conspiracy theory, but I mean, think about it. You can be replaced, right? So I feel like this is almost like a power play yeah. of saying, hey, look, we could replace thousands, thousands of positions. You could be replaced. So get your ass back into the office. Okay. It's the, it's the exact same bullshit move that Johnny C. Taylor made at Sherm mm. when an employee made a case that their job could be done remotely. So Johnny's dumbass just fired them and outsourced the job to India for 40% less, right? So these are the power plays that rein in the peasants. It's nothing more than control at this point. That's, that's a level that I see because there's no reason for the CEO to come out and say this stupid shit other than trying to rein in the peasants. I like a good conspiracy theory, Chad. <laughs> when Johnny's mentioned, yes. So I posted this on LinkedIn. I was surprised to see how many people were like, sounds like he's trying to set the table to justify layoffs. He's set like he's, he's creating the expectation like, People are going to lose jobs, and it's not my fault. It's technology's fault. So you're not the only conspiracy theorist out there, Chad. There are a lot of people thinking that uh, he said that to serve a purpose of laying off people. Um, now, he did say that they wouldn't lay off people. They would just say they wouldn't be replacing people once those folks left for another job. But you're right in that those people probably don't feel real secure in their, no. in their job right now and are probably looking to get out. And you save yourself from the bad PR when people just leave and you don't have to lay people off and you get a little bit extra severance to keep in the coffer. So conspiracy theories abound on this one at IBM, which leads it's, us to Chad. Yeah. Your Xanadu, your paradise, <laughs> your Nirvana. Can I interest you in a, a, a robotic CEO, AI oh, CEO? Well, that, that's, wait a minute. That's what, what one that's, an article from Futurism argues <laughs> that rather than replacing employees with AI-powered robots, CEOs should consider replacing themselves with artificial intelligence. A CEO's primary function is often to measure business growth, a task that can be outsourced to AI pretty easily. But Chad, I want to know your thoughts, my favorite CEO hater. So I don't hate CEOs. I hate that they have become overrated. Let's just say that. So CEO pay has skyrocketed nearly 1500, 1500 since mm -hmm. 1978. While the people who are actually doing the fucking work, their wage increases, guess what? Not even 20%, 18%. So the yep. average CEO today is earning 400 times more than the employee who's doing the work. Uh, another quote from uh, Futurism, Amazon CEO Andrew Jassy 
2021 salary is capped at a staggering 213 million, a number amounting to the collective earnings of 6,474 average Amazon employees. That salary, not total comp. CEOs get paid ungodly amounts of cash. If we could just ratchet that down to where it was before, it just makes sense. But, but listen to this, even the CEO of Warner Brothers Discovery, David Zaslov, who raked in 200, almost $250 million back in 2021, was named on the worst CEO list of 2022. They're still getting paid, even though they're doing shitty fucking jobs. They're bloating. They're not managing the company. Right. So we're seeing all these huge layoffs. They're not doing their job. So one of two things need to happen. They need to take a huge pay cut and or they need to get the fuck fired. CEOs aren't going anywhere, Chad. Let me let me. They let me aren't. Keep, unless no. unless the Red Army shows up in San Francisco, the system will will prevail over uh, the working class. Uh, every day of the week, the, the uh, peasants. Which, yes, which which should we should mention a couple other startups that came out uh, recently. So uh, Harvey is a company; uh, they just raised twenty one twenty one million dollars. They're looking to uh, augment or replace a lot of the tasks of a lawyer. Um, and you and I both have some familiarity with lawyers. Uh, and believe you me, a lot of the shit they do can be automated or at least yes. augmented. The other one, a company called Ninja Tech AI. Horrible name, but some really smart folks at some really big companies uh, just raised $5 million in alpha. You got to sign up on their waiting list to get access to that. They're going to replace um, assistants, executive and otherwise, uh, with like real looking people, like facial. This is some next next generation shit. Head out to Ninja Tech AI, um, NinjaTech.ai, I think, if you want to look, look at more. But I will reiterate. The CEOs and the shareholders would be the last one standing in the castle when the when the peasants come with the pitchforks to take over. Now, CEOs will augment their job and probably have more time on the golf course, more time on the beach, hanging out with you in Portugal uh, using, using AI. But uh, they'll be damned if they're going to be replaced by AI. Well, not just reply. They're not going to be replaced. Like you said, they're going to be augmented and yep. they're just going to continue to make this crazy amount of cash. And that's the thing is that we need to, we need to focus on the narrative that we've been told our entire life. I mean, we take a look at just basic economics, whenever quote unquote inflation happens, we don't look at price gouging or profiteering. We look at wages and wage growth. And we mm -hmm. focus on middle class and it's like, Oh wait, these wages are growing too fast. Motherfucker, please. 1500% compared to 18%. You fuck off Steve Ratner. <laughs> And that is part one of our doomsday segment. <laughs> we'll take a quick break and come back with another startup raising some money. Hospitality is the heart of our society. It brings people together to share great food, drinks, and experiences. But successfully managing a restaurant or hotel is no easy feat. That's where Harry comes in. Harry is the frontline employee experience platform that helps you build, manage, and engage great teams. With Harry, managers can easily find and hire top talent, manage timekeeping, and communicate with employees at any time from any place. Candidates and team members can quickly and efficiently apply for jobs, swap shifts, and access important information entirely from their mobile devices. And Harry's robust employee engagement tools make team members feel more connected than ever. With Harry, as an owner or operator, you get a bird's eye view of your business. From turnover cost, labor cost, employee sentiment, compliance risk, and team performance. Run your business better by understanding the power of your people. Because when your team is the heart of your business, Harry is the heartbeat. See how it transforms your business. All right, Chad, I, I like things that are simpler. But how about a company, how about a company called Simpler? That's spelled S-I-M-P-P-L-R. There's two Ps. I don't know if it's simpler <laughs> or not. But anyway, the Cal California-based internal social network platform uh -huh. has raised $70 million in a funding round. This brings total funding to $131.1 million. Simpler aims to enhance employee engagement. Simpler's platform also uses sentiment and emotion analysis to track and monitor employee attitudes 
and language patterns. Scary. The funds raised will be used to expand the company's workforce and product R&D. Chad, your thoughts on Simpler? Horrible name. The whole misspelling generation won't even get this one right. Uh, has Facebook... Only those using Flickr will get this yeah. one right. <laughs> so has Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, and others ruined the social network forever, allowing these types of platforms to pop up? I mean, do... Does a company really want and or need their very own social network? I mean, who polices it? Will employees really even use it? And then from tech, from TechCrunch, what you'd actually said, Simpler also uses AI for sentiment and, and emotional analysis. Mm -hmm. what, yep. what, what employee is going to want to put any of their information and or data or anything into that? Moreover, Simpler's CEO declined to answer questions about the company's privacy policy, including long simpler store users data or yeah how long sorry uh simpler store stores user data and whether users can easily delete the data Th this is a big fuck you man i don't know how they got 70 million dollars isn't slack teams and that facebook work thing enough for business already i mean it, it to me it feels like some of these founders get to the point where they are raising money to pad their own wallet mm -hmm. so that they can get the fuck out. I mean, whenever it just happens, right? It just, it, to me, this sounds, it, it sounds like a pyramid scheme. It feels like a pyramid scheme. Facebook for your company. What could be more fun than that, Chad? Create a profile, connect, share pictures, do polls. Oh yeah. Play music to each other. I don't know what's going on, but uh, it certainly sounds good. And I'm sure a lot of employees will think it's a lot of fun to get on the social network internally and uh, engage with their coworkers. And However, Chad, there. I must I must caution you. How did how did Facebook make all their money? Data. Data. They know everything about you. So you're while you're product. while you're having fun sharing pictures at the uh, company picnic. The company is learning more and more about you, including yes. when you want to leave. Maybe you're uh, uh, lobbying other coworkers to leave with you. Maybe you want to start a company that's a competitor. Oh, boy, Chad. Simpler sounds like a fantastic way for your company to monitor you and keep you in line. It's I like say no. Cam Cambridge Analytica. Say, say <laughs> no to the simpler simpler life this has disaster written all Ooh, over it if they start nasty. if they start uh importing data or exporting your data to other companies and that company can like create a, a score on you of like what yeah. kind of employee you are are you uh you know is it going to be mutiny on the bounty when you show up like this is a really bad idea and the only way that they could get that kind of money is because they spun this story to investors about we're going to be able to track people all across their entire professional uh, life, and it's going to make us a ton of money. Whew. Yeah, no. All right. Doomsday part two, baby. Here we go. Let's go to a little more corporate angle on this one. All right, so number one, shares of Chegg. Chad, we're too young to know what Chegg is or benefit from it because we were in school. Uh, when when Cliff's notes were considered cheating. Uh, anyway, yes. so shares of Chegg uh, coming to help students with homework, exam prep, and writing support fell by 50 freaking percent after they reported a fall in revenue due to, quote, significant spike in student interest in chat GPT. Chad, your take on the Chegg news. Chegg is the blockbuster in this scenario, while Khan Academy is the Netflix and they are actually piloting chat GPT in the hopes that the tech can turbocharge its system with generative AI tutors that leverage the content already provided in Khan Academy. So we're going to see this throughout every single industry kids period. Mm -hmm. We're going to have the Chegs of the world, the encyclopedia Britannica's of the world that are just going to die because they didn't innovate, because they didn't go that next step, right? And then you're gonna have the Khan Academies uh, where they automatically, I mean, they are feverishly going into this saying, wow, this could really supercharge what we do. 
and it could help us really force multiply how we tutor students in our platform. So there is a great opportunity to turbocharge platforms and companies versus what Chegg is looking at, the Blockbuster, is uh, having one store in Alaska. And I don't even know, I don't even think that one exists anymore. Yeah, I, I, that, you went up, you went above my head on that one. So, uh, Chad, if you want to know what's coming, watch the kids. Remember Napster? Yeah. That was, that was a revolution driven by the kids. And the kids are going to go around, over, and under the fences and walls that, we as adults create. And I think Chegg is just the tip of the iceberg for what the kids and eventually the adults are going to be doing to public companies and regular old companies uh, all around every industry whatsoever. You and I talked about a little company called Textio in our space uh, yep. a couple of weeks ago. Imagine if Textio was a public company. There would be headlines like this coming out of Textio and, yeah. and fear of like companies just going to chat GPT and writing their own uh, unbiased um, job postings and their stock would tank more than 50. I promise you that if that news came out. So this watch what the kids do, because this is coming to a company near you and it might be company to the company that you currently work for. And you should be aware of that. But yes, tip of the iceberg. This is going to be a common thing. Um, if, if the company you're using or working for can be disrupted, this shit and these kind of headlines are going to be hitting you. And I guarantee you they're hitting a lot of the companies in our space. A lot of the unicorns that we talked about 2020 through 2022. Yeah. They're, they're going through the same shit. They just not, there's not public companies that have to put out headlines on this stuff, but I promise you they are feeling the pain just like the people who own commercial real estate everywhere, but certainly places like San Francisco and New York city that have a high density of people in downtown. So this week we learned that nearly uh, 30% of San Francisco's office space is now vacant. Most notably a building in downtown San Francisco that is worth or was sold for $300 million four years ago is likely to sell for 80% less on the market now. 80% less. And in New York City, a report from Columbia University says New York City office buildings could tumble $48.75 billion in value in the coming years. These are just New York and San Francisco, but I guarantee you every city in the world, thanks to remote work, is feeling the pain. What's your take, Chad? We need to reimagine cities, much like our relationship has changed to work. Our, our our relationship to cities need to be different. I mean, in some cases, we need to turn into destination, more of a destination location, even for people who are quote unquote locals. We have to innovate as opposed to, you know, have this fear mongering that's going on. Yes, prices are, are, are coming down. Okay. And they're, they're dropping, they're plummeting. Okay. That's an opportunity for organizations to actually get in there and also for the city of New York to start looking at innovating how they're pulling people in. I mean, that, it's all there is to it, right? It, it, everything is changing so fluidly with technology today, even brick and mortar, right? So mm -hmm. we have to evolve to be able to say that, well, we need to force people into the cities because of rent. No, this is what we call evolution. Mm -hmm. The pandemic did this. It demonstrated how fluid we could be as human beings. It also helped us reprioritize our lives in some cases and work. And that long ass commute is not a part of it anymore. So we've got to reimagine these things. We've got to be smarter. We've got to evolve. Yep. And there's going to be a lot of pain in that evolution. Yeah, uh, of course. You and I talked about Sam Zell last week, uh, oh, who fuck was that guy. pounding the table to get back to work, <laughs> get back in the office. Morale will improve once the beatings start. Anyway, yeah. uh, how many rich people do you think own commercial real estate around the world? All of them. A lot, right? All so of them. No, it's no it's no shocker that all these people are like, get back in the office, work from yeah. home is bullshit, uh, remote sucks, et cetera. So the first of the cycle is them bitching about this, trying to get people back to work, which isn't going to work for the most part. Right. The second is... Uh, you're going to see defaults, bankruptcies, runs on bank. Uh, a lot of the a lot of the uh, loans that came for these local markets, commercial real estate, 
our regional banks, local banks, um, they're going to feel a lot of pain. And you're starting to see it now in the news uh, with smaller regional banks under pressure from from shareholders and, and fear of what's going to go on there. So that's going to be really painful too. The banking system is going to take a lot of pain um, from this. And then the next thing is there are a lot of laws right now, zoning laws that say you can't build residential shit here. You can't build whatever. This is a commercial real estate uh, section of town. Those laws have to change and change yes. very fast. Yep. Uh, we got to put on the, uh, the, you know, the expedition ex expediting of those um, in a, in a big way, but yeah, you're right. Look, they're not going to, they're not going to tear these buildings down um, no. and, and grow farms. They're not going to like put a six flags in the middle of Manhattan. So, so these changes are going to happen just like in 2008, when everything went to shit, it took five, 10 years for things to come back. And I was in Phoenix at that time. Phoenix is back. Like it was Florida's back. Like it was before 2008, nine, um, mm -hmm. these cities will be back, but there, there will be a lot of pain uh, that happens before that. And speaking of pain, Chad, let's talk about reproduction. Oh, good God. That was never painful for me, at least. Oh, yeah. <laughs> on yeah. my side. But, but this story might be painful. So so robots apparently are taking our women. This in the news this week. Two babies have been born after a robot guided by a plates, PlayStation 5 controller. <laughs> yeah, I said PlayStation 5 controller <laughs> fertilized human eggs. This is in Barcelona, your neighbor there in Portugal, Chad. The procedure created by Overture Life is intended to make it easier for women to become pregnant in a cheaper and more accessible way. And yes, without men. Chad, talk me off the ledge of all this catastrophe news. What are your thoughts on robot daddies? Yeah, I got nothing there, man. I I, I got nothing. I don't know. I, I, I can't put myself in the, the the shoes of a lot of the like sexless 20 year old dudes that are out there today and, yeah. and why this could, you know, in, in some cases be necessary. Now there are lesbian couples who want to, to, to have kids and, and this might be a, a great mechanism to be able to do that. But personally, this is well outside of my wheelhouse. Well, yeah, it's, it's nice that all those uh, dudes in their basements are playing video games because that might be the only way that they get to impregnate a woman with that PlayStation. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Look, if, if women are going to resort to pregnancy by PlayStation controllers, it'll be our fault, men, mm. and the sex robots that we're making right now and perfecting, apparently. Not that I would know anything about this, but I read the no, news. Sure. And it'll, it'll probably start in Utah, Chad, because Utah has just blocked Pornhub from the entire uh. state. And with that, Chad, only Bill Burr, one of our favorite comedians, can sum up the future of sex and how men are going to be responsible for fucking it all up. Take a listen. He's in England. <laughs> we'll be right back <laughs> all right chad mcdonald's is in the news call it the not so happy meal Whew. a mcdonald's franchise in louisville kentucky has been found to have violated federal labor laws by employing two 10 year old children that's right i said 10 years old who were not paid and worked late hours, including operating a deep fryer, which is prohibited for workers even under 16, let alone 10 years old. The franchisee yeah. has been fined nearly, get ready for this, Chad, $40,000 by the Department of Labor. 
Two other McDonald's franchises were also investigated and found to have employed 305 children to work more hours than legally permitted and perform prohibited tasks. Chad, what you got on this story out of the Golden Arches? Welcome to America, kids. So this from the Economic Policy Institute. In the past two years, at least 10 states have introduced or passed laws rolling back child labor protections. Here in the United States, already in 2023, eight bills to weaken child labor protections have been introduced in six Midwestern states, Iowa, Minnesota, Missouri, Nebraska, Ohio, and South Dakota, and in Arkansas, where a bill replacing restrictions on work for 14 and 15-year-olds has now been signed into law. In Iowa, probably the most extreme, in Iowa, they've proposed lifting restrictions on hazardous work, lowers age for alcohol servers, Mm -hmm. extends work hours, grants employers immunity from civil liability for workplace injuries, illness, and death. That's right. Your kids could go to work and die. That 10 year old go in Iowa, because this is the state of America kids. So this is nothing new, apparently, uh, this is news <laughs> to me. Um, The rise in illegal child labor has been observed by the Department of Labor since 2018, and the agency has issued millions in fines in just 2022 alone. Wow. $40,000 employing two 10-year-olds. Nothing's going to change, and you and I talk about this all the time. Nothing's going to change with these little fines. That that local McDonald's probably makes 40 grand in one day uh, in terms of sales of of chicken McNuggets and uh, McShakes. So until we start seeing real fines or perp walks or the McDonald's headquarters Mm -hmm. putting on some orange jump suits, this is going to continue to be a problem. I just can't believe no one noticed to a couple of 10 year olds at the store. And, and by the way, this is Louisville. I mean, I know it's Kentucky, but we're not talking like Dukes, a hazard, uh, boss hog hazard (laughs) County, Kentucky. We're talking like a city. In yes. Kentucky. So uh, how nobody noticed this or said something uh, just blows my mind. Um, and frankly, if there's an argument for automation in restaurants, I think there's not a better one uh, than keeping little Johnny and uh, Janie away from the the fryer, which I can tell you as a fast food worker is not fun to be around. And even no. it's, it's even worse, worse to clean. I'm loving it. McDonald's, not so much. And Chad, that's why I'm boycotting the Quarter Pounder for at least a week. We out. We out. Thank you for listening to what's it called? The podcast. The Chad. The cheese. Brilliant. They talk about recruiting. They talk about technology. But most of all, they talk about nothing. Just a lot of shout outs of people you don't even know, and yet you're listening. It's incredible. And not one word about cheese. Not one. Cheddar. Blue. Nacho. Pepper Jack. Swiss. There's so many cheeses, and not one word. So weird. Anywho, be sure to subscribe today on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. That way, you won't miss an episode. And while you're at it, visit www.chadcheese.com. Just don't expect to find any recipes for grilled cheese. It's so weird. We out!